Morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, guys. I hope you enjoy your first sips as much as I enjoy mine. I'll tell you what, I get so much out of them. And literally, I wake up, I still got my jammies on and things like that. And that's why I'm going to wear the hat in the morning because, you know, I don't have to make up my hair or any of that kind of stuff. And could just come out here and get to have that first sip and enjoy it with you. So I'll tell you, look, you know how important you are. If I'm waiting to have my first sip with you right on this show, I'll tell you right, right there, that's for sure. So you guys are important. Something really wild, guys. The lunacy has reached new levels. I kid you not, the insanity is absolutely crazy. Reading an article about a mayoral candidate in Cheyenne, um, Wyoming. Cheyenne, Wyoming. That's right. I almost lost that one. Anyway, this guy is proposing to have AI govern the city. I mean, you have absolutely lost it. I mean, look, people are willing to almost acquiesce every thinking duty they could ever have. And here you got someone coming out and they want the city to be run by AI. How do you like AI to be your government? How do you like AI to be your mayor? How about your senator? How about your president? And on and on, if this kind of thinking was to go on, I guess it would be kind of like, you know, uh, what was that cartoon show there? A what you know, Wally, Wally, you know what? We're all gonna sit in our little chairs and let Wally and the you know clean up all our mess and you know let the AI just run the show and all that while we just sit there eating you know popcorn and potato chips and sipping on sodas and oh well you know we can deal with that. We'll just pump you full of medication and on and on and on. Guys, we know even me saying it, it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? And that's the thing, guys. You hear this kind of lunacy coming out and more and more and more. And that's why I always say, come on. Are we really going to forfeit every kind of thinking duty that we have now? A lot of folks get this about AI. When it comes to, you know, creative writing and stuff like that, a lot of people are turning to that chat GBT and all these other ones there to actually do it for them. And in fact, sometimes, you know, people, when it comes to commenting or writing articles and stuff that are getting published, it is AI generated. And then someone is just slapping their name to it. Well, you know, I thought up the idea, but I got AI to write the, write the article kind of thing. And this is where, like, to me, it is truly mind-bending that uh, there's portions of society that will actually go down with that and things like that. In fact, I think David Swartz pointed something out was really wild. <laughs> mm. So apparently in this one particular uh, legal case, these lawyers went out there and were using AI to kind of, you know, get get cases together so that they could show precedent and things like that. And they thought, oh, well, we'll just use AI and save a little time. Well, apparently AI started to invent the cases, invent the cases. And oh my goodness, did these guys get hammered hard because these cases didn't even exist, but it invented the case, the case numbers, the, the adjudication, the, the whole bit was just absolutely fabricated. And, you know, that, and they went in there as if it was gospel truth. And boy, it's just amazing they didn't even get disbarred. But it shows you, you know, that that kind of thing is going on out there. And I am not against utilizing tools that are going to benefit us. That is for sure. We are moving forward absolutely into a major new technological world that we can barely even hardly imagine right now. And certainly distributed ledger technology is going to be a massive, massive part of that. But guys, there are some things that we are going to want to hold on to no matter what, absolutely no matter what. And this is where your critical thinking, do not allow yourself to get so used into these habits. Look, critical thinking, when we talk about critical thinking, because a lot of people think, oh, well, I have an opinion. I think of that. No, logical, systematic ways of thought right? Remember that when you learn that in school, you start with your hypothesis, you end with your conclusion and all the steps in between. That type of logical thinking is what's caused so much innovation and invention in the wide world. 
And yet, a majority of people are really just acquiescing that, not disciplining their mind to kind of be a problem solving, you know, machine and to think through those issues, not just in mathematics, obviously, but in relationships in the world to, to actually, you know, go out there and to, you know, be able to solve problems. Now they measure that. Don't you remember all the IQ tests where they, you know, you fix the puzzles, you do this, you do that, and all the competency exams, especially all the government jobs, and that that they want you to go through a lot of people are not going to be able to manage that why they are forfeiting that mechanism that you train your mind with to get out there and criti critically think and this is why you know when you just sit there and allow and acquiesce to all these opinions that come out the pike you have set yourself up big time to literally be just led by whatever comes down the road because why? You're making most of your decisions, believe it or not, on emotion. How you react to it, how you respond to it, whether you agree, oh, that makes, yeah, I agree with that, oh, no, you know, this kind of stuff, rather than kind of critically think, now I love debate, in fact, I love it when people get in there in the comments and disagree with my opinion and what I have to say, I absolutely love that. And the reason is, is because for me, that is, that forms debate, that forms critical thinking. Why? Because if you only go with those that agree with you, well, you're never exposed to anything really new. Now, I have personally changed opinions on various things because the argument that the person presented was so strong and worthwhile paying attention to that I thought, you know what? I'm going to look into this a lot more than I have already and looked into it and found out, you know what? I think they're right. I think they're onto something here. And that's what it's all about. Nowadays, you got a society that will not even tolerate an alternative opinion. Think about that. And think about all the people that you are literally kind of like cutting out of the ability to solve some of these problems by not allowing that opinion. Think about it, because there are a lot of problems that we are dealing with in the wide world today, and I bet you there's people out there that have a solution that could genuinely work, but people won't even have the tolerance to hear it. That is crazy, but right there, wow. And not to think, I don't think it's gonna pass in Cheyenne, Wyoming, where they're gonna have AI governor. I don't think that's gonna happen. But the fact that somebody is willing to come out there and say, yeah, that's a good idea, that to me says a lot because there's no way you would have heard that not even five years ago and stuff like that. And so it's really kind of mind bending. And it usually starts like that with one person over here, then again, another, and then another, and then, and eventually then some little township has it, or how about that? Oh, well, it's working over there and, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, dirt town, you know, whatever, you know, somewhere out in the backwoods. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, when the population is a population of, what, 12 or something like that. Maybe. <laughs> but anyway, and by the way, Cheyenne, Wyoming has 65,000 residents. And I don't believe all those 65,000 are going to go along with this whole idea and vote something in where they can be governed by AI. That's for sure. But anyway, guys, it shows the kind of nonsensical way People are out there thinking these days. And, and sometimes you have to think, are they just throwing this out there for the sensationalism of it? Are they that deprived of attention that they have to get out there and do that? Sometimes that's what it is. Haven't you noticed that? And that they, the more outrageous it is, sometimes that's why they get out there and they're just as outrageous as can be so that people will be kind of give them that attention and they'll get their 15 minutes of fame like Andy Warhol used to say and stuff like that. Anyway, that is crazy. Now, something else that's on the radar, and I want to talk about this a little more, you know, coming up tonight in tonight's show. But October is when there's going to be that BRICS summit. And that is where you've heard, you know, uh, Putin come out there and basically say, hey, listen, we're going to be moving over to our own distributed ledger technology currency among all these BRICS countries. It's going to be wild to hear what comes down there. And guys, look, Ripple has agreements in there. XRP is being utilized. They've even mentioned Ripple and the XRP ledger in their documents and stuff like that. And if things were to go down that way, and I think it's October the 24th, you could see this space literally fly. I mean, absolutely fly. And think about this too. 
you know for certain that they are going to move away from this US dollar system in a big, big way. They already have, but it's going to get even more aggressive. The de-dollarization is going to become crazy at a breakneck pace. And the reason is it gets them out from underneath this boot of sanctions and everything else that they have had to deal with. And a lot of these countries are like, we're not willing to acquiesce to a system where you can bully us around anymore and, and actually pers you know push your political will on us through sanctions and everything else with the threat of financial you know exclusion and this and that. So we're setting up our own system and Goodbye to you. And that is exactly what's going on. And guys, I'm telling you, the tsunami of what's coming to the West is is going to be staggering. And, and I think it's going to, people, the lifestyle that we've enjoyed in the West, usually, has been, you know, afforded to us by the whole, you know, uh, oil oiled back dollar right the you know the petrol dollar and that is off the table it is off the table the 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 world the u.s reserve currency is dead it's dead we just not haven't had the funeral yet and wait and see when that comes pumbling in and i believe that they are holding that back and in this next you know election cycle right the next four years after november I think during that time, wow, wow, I don't care who is in office. What they are going to face, boy, is going to put some age on them, I'll tell you what, because it is going to be bad. I really do believe that, guys, in a big way. Wow. Mm-hmm. Most people are not going to be anywhere near positioned to deal with it. Now, for those of us, you and I, that have, have kind of like peeled back that onion and saw a little bit further down the road and have insulated ourselves into these digital assets, I think it's going to be absolutely amazing and very well could represent the greatest wealth transfer the world has ever seen. I genuinely do believe that. But I'll tell you what, guys, look at your family, your friends, your neighbors, and even those you've talked about, uh, you know, about this space. They are going to be in a world of hurt. Don't wait for all of it to come. Don't wait till the tsunami sirens are going off to actually prepare. Get out there right now, like get your pantry ready. Get the things that you normally use, buy a little more, you know, if you got some cash, take a little bit, put it aside, whatever you got, just a little bit. You know, get out of debt as much as you possibly can. Put yourself in a position where you're not gonna be overwhelmed by it, but you can overcome the whole thing. Don't be a victim. Yet too many people, they got their head buried in the sand like ostriches. They don't want to hear about it. It causes them way too much anxiety to even think about it. And so as a result, what happens? They're not ready for it when it comes. And for those of us that are, yeah, we're going to be thinking of our family and this and that and how we might be able to help them. But there's their broader community and that kind of stuff. And it is, I really do believe, I mean, it's going to get wild. In the last Great Depression, now think about this, I think unemployment was in that 30% range, something like that. And you know, you had bread lines and soup lines, man, way lined up and all this and that. And it wasn't just, you know, oh, well, you're poor people over here. No, it was a lot of people were out there and you know, businessmen and on and on and on. Guys don't think that can't happen again. It can, it can absolutely happen again. The world is not ready for what's coming and a crisis. Now, what happened in that last go round? Well, you know what pulled the wide world out of the Great Depression, don't you? It was WAR. And don't kid yourself. I think we're on the premises of something big in this world. And it would not surprise me, not one iota, if that's where this takes us. We see some kind of major boom, then a massive collapse. And then what happens? Well, you get into a major global international conflict. And that's how I feel that things could really go down. And I do believe that within the next cycle there from 2025 right through to what? 2029 in there, we could really see something like that go down. Now, we have 2024, of course, in November is the election. And that goes to, you know, 2028 November for the election. But remember, the rains don't pass until early into, what, 2029. That's why I say I think it's going to be something wild. Get ready for it. Don't let yourself get stuck in a situation being unprepared when the warning bells have been ringing off like absolute crazy guys. Pay attention. Just pay attention. 
and I think you'll be able to make it. At least that's what Judy and I are doing. We are getting our house ready. We've had been doing that for a long, long time. But needless to say, we always look over and say, okay, what are we missing here? Just to be on the sure side. And guys, it pays. Look, we all have car insurance. We hope we never use it, don't we? We hope we never use it, but we still got it. And that's the deal, guys, because you never know what might be coming. And so it just pays a little bit to have a little bit of that insurance sitting inside those in the house there and stuff like that. And guys, that's why we feel, you know, it. What it's no point in being anxious about tomorrow. Prepare for tomorrow. And then you don't have to be anxious about it. That's how I kind of think. Well, guys, I'll tell you what. I hope you're having an absolutely fabulous day it is a beautiful gorgeous one out here in texas i pray that it's a gorgeous one wherever you are in the wide world and until later on when we have an amazing video for you have a great one and take care